Today I thought I would go over the fundamentals of long range shooting and kind of share some good information of how to do long range shooting and really, really long range shooting. Um, the first thing that we need to talk about is the setup of the scope. So the scope needs to be leveled on the gun and then there's different cant to the scope that you can use. So for really long range shooting, and this is 600 plus yards, um, we're going to go out to a thousand on this rifle. This rifle is a 308. It's just built up off of a Remington 700 action. Uh, it's got the short tactical barrel and then a really heavy stock. This is a Macmillan a Metalist, I believe it was, on the stock. And then we've added an accurate mag uh, conversion to it. But basically what we need to do for the setup of the scope. So what you need to do when you're doing your scope, you can either have a really good gunsmith, somebody that's into long range stuff do it, or you can do this yourself pretty easily. A lot of times, you know, you just go buy this, go to the gun store and you buy a scope and they'll throw it on your gun and they don't go through the process to level it like what you need to do, especially if you're going to be reaching out really long distances. Basically, the way I do it, I've got these little levels, and we're going to slip the levels on the weaver rail. So I know that my, my gun itself has got a real nice level to it. I know that my gun is level, and we should be pretty dang close off that weaver rail. Now to do the scope, you can go right off the turret, um, and that will get you pretty close. Depending on the manufacturer of the scope, sometimes they have different tolerances, so you don't necessarily always want to go to that. What I like to do, where I shoot, there's some tall upright posts and we put a level on those posts and they're perfectly straight up and down. So what I'll do is I'll level level the, the rifle, I'll get behind it, look through the scope and line my crosshair up with that post and that way I can roll my scope back or forth to perfectly line it up. Once I know that the scope is level then I like to install a level right on my scope. So as I'm down shooting I can maintain that level. Now what's going to happen, it, it doesn't seem like it's all that much if I'm just slightly off level, but in essence what's happening is the scope is turning and because we've got a crown in our, our bullet path, the, if we're slightly out of level, that's really going to throw our bullet off at long range. So I want to go through this as carefully as I can, make sure that I'm level and get starting out with a good playing field. The other thing to do when you're setting up your scope is you want to get in the good comfortable cheek weld the way you're going to shoot it and you want to get that eye relief perfect. So what you want to do is you actually want to slide the scope forward and back and find that midpoint of the perfect eye, eye relief. And what I like to do is use a pencil and make a little mark and I'll go back and forth until I find that. Once you've got that all set, you're leveled, you're locked down, the next step before you shoot, you need to focus your objective. So I'm going to go, and this is really good to, to have a friend do this. You can rotate it, close your eyes, open, and you go through this process to find out your best focus. And there again, I'll use a pencil and put a mark on either side of good focus, and then I'll put it in the center. And that's where I'll leave it. The next thing to do is to adjust your parallax. Now most scopes you'll either have a parallax up here on, on the tube or you'll have one back here and they come hash marked with what they recommend and it's kind of funny I've never found one that's perfect so the way you check this don't necessarily pay attention to the marks on it what you're going to do is you're going to be on target and you're going to bob your head up and down and side to side and you'll see your crosshairs moving on the target and you're going to dial this until you see that it, it stops moving. Once it stops moving, then you know your parallax is set. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through some math uh, and, and different process to do this. So one of the biggest problems you're going to have is knowing how far something is so that you can dial your turret to that distance. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. There is, of course, range finders. You'll find these to be inconsistent at long range. Uh, so I generally don't use that too much. Most of the time I know my yardage, but if I don't, typically I'm going to know the size of my target. So 
there's a couple little quick formulas that you can use to figure out your range. So if I know my target size in inches, what I do is I take that size, times it by 27.77, and then I measure it in my scope and divide it by how many mils are in my scope, and that will give me my distance. You can also do this in meters, it's basically the same thing, except for you times it by 25.4. So once I've found that out, then I, I can use my come up chart and I know where to dial the target to. There is also a cool little mill dot master that you can get, and this is a handy thing to have with you. And basically it's doing the same thing, it's just on a slide rule. So we've got our mills, and we've got our target size. We dial those, we measure our target, with how many mils, we know how big the target is, so we put that there, and it spits out our target range. It's pretty handy, and I, I don't get caught without this. The other thing that's important to have, have a good notebook with you. Every time you shoot, take notes. You can start to build your come up sheets, um, and it works really, really well. To calc wind, wind is a little trickier because it changes. And the way to do that, it's a similar formula. We're going to take our range in hundreds. So if I'm at 600 yards, it's going to be 600 times the mile per hour of the wind divided by 10 for 308 or divided by 15 for 300 wind mag. Um, the way you figure mile per hour, so if, if something is moving, you can kind of judge, oh, that's about as fast as a guy walks, which is about three miles an hour. A guy jogging would be about five. A uh, flat out sprint would be about eight to 10. Um, there's another way to do it. You can actually look at the, the heat coming off and the little uh, mirage, if you will. So if you see a mirage that's basically moving straight up, you know that the heat's boiling and there's no real wind down there. If you see a slight, you could guess that'd be about three to five miles an hour you know, and, and more extreme, 8 to 10. Um, and that, that'll get you pretty close. The other thing to think about is the spin drift of the bullet. When you get out to about a thousand yards, typically we're seeing in a 308 about a half mil spin drift to the right. So you're going to have to account for that. There's a lot more that gets into it. There are things like the temperature, the humidity, the altitude, your barometric pressure, all those things affect the bullet and the math gets insane, almost too much. There is a cool other way to do it. This is a Kestrel with Horus software. So this will sample the altitude, the temperature, the barometric pressure, the humidity, the wind, and it'll plot everything for you. And this thing is amazing. I don't necessarily want to rely on this. I still want to have the basic math in my head, uh, but it's a good way to do it. The other thing that's indispensable is to have a good spotter with you. Somebody on a good piece of glass that can watch your shots and help you count for the wind. Sometimes you'll see the wind is moving and it'll act actually track your bullet back and forth. If you have a good spotter, they can look for what we call the gummy worm. Uh, and I know that's kind of a funny thing to call it. If, if you have a spotting scope and you ever get the chance to sit behind somebody shooting really long range, you'll be able to see something and it's the disruption of the bullet as it travels through the air. And it basically looks kind of like a clear gummy worm traveling to the target. That's a terrible drawing. And, and you'll just kind of see it arching to the target. And you'll, you'll just see it. it looks like a clear gummy worm going towards the target. If you watch for that, then you can watch their bullet path and you can help help them calc for the wind and get on target.